Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Hi everybody, welcome back to the fourth lecture in chapter two. And in this lecture, I want to talk about what a space curve is and some aspects of the kinematics of a space curve. So a space curve is probably what you imagine. It's a curve in three-dimensional space. It can be in higher dimensions, but we're working in three dimensions at the moment. So how do we represent it? So that we can work with it. Well, each point in space is given by a coordinate x, y, z, and it can vary. That coordinate can vary with time. As it varies with time, it traces out a curve in space. A, a curve, one dimension, because t is one dimensional. So we can represent it as a vector in this way: r of t, vector r of t, is equal to x of t i plus y of t j plus z of t k. That is a space curve, or sometimes we call it a path. Now if we can draw a picture of this. So we have the x, y, z coordinates defined by the i, j, k directions, and we have the vector r of t, and the tip of the vector, say look at time t, locates a point p, if we let t go to t plus delta t, the vector moves to a point q. And in that way, the tip of the vector r of t, which has location x of t, y of t, z of t, in the ijk coordinates, or vector coordinate system, traces out a curve in space. And then we have notions that are probably familiar to, we, to you. Uh, we have the velocity, or instantaneous velocity, of the space curve, and that's just the um, time derivative of the space curve, or r of t, that defines the space curve. And it's a tangent vector to the path at the point p. That's the interpretation that we have. So v of t is we saw in the last lecture how to differentiate such vector-valued functions of a scalar variable expressed in the ijk coordinates. The magnitude of the velocity, sometimes that's just referred to as speed, and it's given by this expression, the square root of the sum of the squares of the velocity of each component. Now. Now comes an important idea here that's going to be useful. This parameter s is referred to as the arc length, the length along the curve measured with respect to some initial point. Now, if the curve is given, x of t and y of t and z of t are given, you can view this expression here as a differential equation. x, y, and z are known, and their derivatives are known. The, this is a differential equation for the arc length. And if we integrate it, we need endpoints, possibly from some initial point, s naught to s, from t naught to t, we can get the length of a segment of the curve from s naught to s, or from x of t naught, y of t naught, z of t naught, up to the point s, which would correspond to x of t, y of t, and z of t. Now, I said a lot of words about that. Uh, There's something you need to think about, because arc length is an important idea that the property of curves that we're going to meet and go into in more detail in the next chapter. 
Okay. Then the second derivative of the space curve, r of t, or the first derivative of the velocity, you should recognize as acceleration, and the magnitude of the acceleration is the usual expression. So these are going to come up a lot in our description of the motion of mechanical systems, which uh, the type of mechanical systems most frequently will be single particles moving under the action of some force. Okay, that's enough for now. We finished the lectures in chapter two, and in the next lecture, I want to talk about the problems at the end of the chapter. So bye for now.